When I talk with patients about how to survive a holiday setting, I say, look, there are some basic fundamental things that you can do. First off, identify why are you there? Why are you eating? Are you eating because you're hungry? Are you eating because you're socializing? Are you eating for pleasure? Are you eating because you're just eating and somebody handed you a plate? So identify sort of why are you there? And if you're there primarily to socialize, let that be the focus. If you're hungry, make sure to make good choices, nutritious choices, and eat that first before you maybe pick up the, the party snack and the food that might not be as nutritious. Always go for the protein first and then add the green stuff. And that's the nutritious stuff that you can really feel pretty comfortable about filling up on. Uh, common sources of protein are going to be meat, fish, chicken. You know, someone's made, got a nice uh, plate of uh, shrimp. That's a good one. Uh, maybe some hard cheeses. It's going to be pretty high content of, of protein relative to some others. Uh, salamis, slices of beef, uh, like little kebabs types of things. Food like that, that's typically food we would think of as high protein. And then green stuff, there's almost always, hopefully, a green salad or somebody brings up a broccoli salad or something that's pretty good. Though That combination you can use to, to give you that sense of fullness and you're going to really minimize uh, getting lots and lots of uh, fat storing calories. You know, After finding the protein in the green stuff, I would say then pick the carb or the treat that you really just can't live without. Maybe that's a piece of pumpkin pie. Maybe that's a piece of somebody's really, really good cheesecake. And you don't have to necessarily eat a big piece. You can have enough to get you the flavor and the taste. So there are ways that you can still enjoy the quality of the food, the entertainment, the company, the socialization, all those things, and, and still make what I'll call the best choice. Uh, if you're going to have alcoholic drinks, Typically, your big, robust beers are going to carry more calories than uh, a, something like a gin and tonic or a vodka and tonic, where you're really not getting a lot of extra calories aside from the alcohol. Cocktails are back in a big way, and yet they're not all created the same. And Everybody, I think, knows what a fufu drink is. If it comes with something stuck in it, like an umbrella or something on it with a cherry, it's a fufu drink. And those typically run between 300 and 350 calories a piece. Whereas if you take something like a vodka and tonic, you're looking at 60 to 90 calories. So you're talking a huge difference for the same amount of alcohol because what's been added is the sweet taste of the, of the sugar in the drink. If you look at something like a, a Manhattan or a Martini or a, um, a Cosmo or a Lemon Drop or something like that, you're going to com come in somewhere in between. And I, I'd have to look at it, but I'm going to guess that a lemon drops 150 to 200 calories, probably about the same as a full body beer. Do the best that you can. Realize that it's one event, it's one holiday. Work with making as the best choices that you possibly can, and avoid what I call this black and white thinking. The best choice. It doesn't have to be a perfect choice. It has to be the best choice. Got such a high concentration of, of simple sugars and fats, that combination together turbocharges fat storage. And the alcohol is uh, maybe going to be 60 or 70 calories contributed to that. So does it make a difference? Yes. Is it worth it? Well, I don't know. That's a, that's, that's a tough one to say for and It has to be each individual. Eggnog comes around one time a year, and it's not what you do once a year that's going to torpedo you. It's what you do every day that's going to sustain you and carry you.